Today, the 29th of May, is Oak Apple Day, where here in Northampton we commemorate the restoration of the monarchy in May 1660. Later today, a service of Holy Communion and thanksgiving for the restoration of the monarchy will be held at All Saints Church, where this account of King Charles's entry into London, written by the royal diarist John Evelyn, will be read. Following the service, the statue of King Charles II will be wreathed with oak leaves. This day, His Majesty Charles II came to London after a sad and long exile and calamitous suffering both of the King and Church, being 17 years. This was also his birthday, and with a triumph of above 20,000 horse and foot, brandishing their swords and shouting with inexpressible joy, the way strewn with flowers, the bells ringing, the streets hung with tapestry, fountains running with wine. The mayor, aldermen, and all the companies in their liveries, chains of gold and banners, lords and nobles clad in cloth of silver, gold and velvet. The windows and balconies, all set with ladies, trumpets, music, and myriads of people flocking, even so far as from Rochester. So as they were seven hours in passing the city, even from two in the afternoon till nine at night. I stood in the strand and beheld it and blessed God, and all this was done without one drop of blood shed, and by that very army which rebelled against him. But it was the Lord's doing, for such a restoration was never mentioned in any history, ancient or modern.
Two people are saying they can't hear us, but we'll try again. Put the call to what they can hear. O Lord God of our salvation, who has been exceedingly gracious unto this land, and by thy miraculous providence did deliver us out of our miserable confusions, by restoring to us and to his own just and undoubted rights, our then most gracious sovereign Lord, King Charles the Second, notwithstanding all the power and malice of his enemies, and by placing him on the throne of his kingdoms, is also restore unto us the public and free profession of thy true religion and worship. Together with our former peace and prosperity, to the great comfort and joy of our hearts, we are here now before thee, the Lord, you thankfulness, to acknowledge thine unspeakable goodness herein, as upon their day showed unto us, and to offer unto thee our sacrifice of praise for the same. And we beseech you to accept this, our unfailing, though unworthy oblation of ourselves, that I all holy obedience and thought word and work unto thy divine majesty, and promising all loyal and dutiful obedience to thine anointed servant now set over us, and to her heirs after her, whom we beseech you to bless with all increase of grace, honour and happiness in this world, and to crown her with immortality and glory in the world to come. For Jesus Christ is sake, our only Lord and Saviour. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 16th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And they sent out unto Jesus their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and thou teachest the way of God in truth. Now they care thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of man. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and see the scripture? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they heard these words, they marvelled and left him, and went their way. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good to be able to hold in these strange circumstances a service for Oak Apple Day and to remember an event in Northampton history which kind of defines where we are today and how we are. Were you to have come to Northampton before 1675, it's likely that standing here would have been somewhere in the middle of All Saints Church, a place a great Norman house of prayer raised up in order to serve the college of priests who worshipped and prayed here and who continually offered masses at the altars of the chantries. On that fateful night in September 1675, however, everything changed. And I don't imagine that on the 29th of May 1660, there was an awful lot of joy being felt in the town of Northampton. Some of those who made the link between our town and the celebration of Oak Apple Day were certainly there in London on this day as King Charles rode in again. Among them was James Compton, the third Earl of Northampton, whose father, the second Earl, had fought as a general in the Royalist Army, seeing combat at Edge Hill before death by misadventure at the otherwise productive Battle of Hopton Heath in 1643. The year before, the rather pathetic figure of the Reverend John Conant had resigned his fellowship of Exeter College, Oxford, intending to take refuge with his uncle, the rector of Lymington, though too late as the parliamentarian's supporting cleric had retreated to Aldgate in London. Conant would, in the Commonwealth era, era enjoy little other interruption to his academic career, despite the odd, tempting offer of the patronage of the Committee for Plundered Ministers the civil wartime body for removing and replacing royalist clergy. When asked to make the odes of loyalty to the Long Parliament upon appointment as rector of Exeter College, he agreed, but added a curious footnote to the effect that he was not abridging his liberty to any other future power that God might put over him. Both the contemporaneous power and the future power would, even after warm overtures, end up dumping comments thought in Cromwell's case, though this in Cromwell's case came with an apology. As restoration loomed, Conant lined up behind its advocates, and as Vice-Chancellor would line up with the crowds, greeting Charles's triumphant entry into London, in that sense so enthusiastically reported by Evelyn at the beginning of this service. Despite his obeisance to the incoming future power, Conant lost both his Vice-Chancellorship and his seat as Regis Professor of Divinity, the crown returning them to their rightful owners. Dumped by a monarch whose reign he welcomed, it seemed almost poetic that he should end up in Northampton. Here he languished for a time, studying the local townsfolk and their religion, it said, before convincing Simon Ford, erstwhile priest of this church, to switch jobs. Before you demonstrate pride that the Vice-Chancellor of Oxford should come to Northampton, bear in mind that he was the second priest of the 17th century who took up the role as Vicar of All Saints before having been, after having been Vice-Chancellor of Oxford. There's always something better and bigger to succeed to. James Compton and John Conant's lives collide on the 20th of September 1675 in the outbreak of the great fire that destroyed much of this town. It burned for an entire day and burned an entire town so enthusiastically that it said that James, Earl of Northampton, was able to observe the inferno all the way from Castle Ashby, several miles away. The town clerk wrote, The wind was very strong to blow the fire on, but it was God who blew the bellows. Others had made a more robust suggestion that the lukewarmness and rank sinfulness of the Church of All Saints was to blame for the outstretching of a divine hand with a flaming sword. Lord Northampton might similarly have drawn a straight line between the parliamentarians of Northampton and the fire that destroyed their town, but aware of the sacking that King Charles had given it following the restoration, made swift moves to tap benefactors for the costs before rushing to Parliament. Nearly six weeks had passed between the fire and the bill. The Earl stood before the King in the withdrawing room, where he was preparing to prorogue the Houses of Parliament and besought His Majesty's leave to rebuild the town that had played their part in causing both their families trouble, violence and bereavement. 
I don't doubt that Compton exaggerated somewhat in his accounts of this, but that he and the king had seen their fathers killed in such conflict, it was a remarkable act of reconciliation. My lord Northampton, King Charles is said to have replied, if you forgive them, then I shall do the same. In its time of great need, the bill to rebuild Northampton was passed, and Crown Commissioners were sent to oversee the works, resolve the disputes, and see that the benefactor of a new Northampton was never forgotten. Once the new century had begun, the portico at All Saints was completed, and Mayor John Agatha sought public subscription for the statue of King Charles, with, with which, we, which we read with oak leaves on this day in a holy celebration. Collins, still dodging propositions for positions elsewhere, elected to remain in Northampton with his wife and twelve children. Once described by his tutor as finding nothing difficult, he was treasured for his pastoral work, which must have been much in demand in such a fragile time. He would eventually take up the post of Archdeacon of Norwich. Our own age is, of course, a time of intense need. We need the pastoral zeal of a Conant the reconciling authority of James Compton. We need also to labour together to rebuild what we have and to mourn what we have lost. On this day, as we again wreath the statue and give thanks for the restoration of the monarchy, we think about those times of great destruction, those times when the world is irrevocably changed and we wonder what on earth will be left at the end of it. And we see in the pattern and example of our ancestors the way in which we might go. Reconciliation, love, the building up of the common good. Upon these three pillars shall be built a new Northampton over and over again, and a new world, safe for all her peoples, and in which we might care for each other. May God richly bless us on this Oak Apple Day, May he richly bless Her Majesty the Queen and her whole family. May he bless the ministers of the Crown and those in our community and in our nation and across the world who are working for the relief of the poor and the upkeep of those who are in danger and distress. And may he bless, preserve and keep us evermore. Amen.
Sandra and Iceberg. Lift them up into the room. It is made on right side today. Let's pray. Our Father, we trust in heaven. Our Lord 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 in heaven.
Day symbolised the restoration of King Charles II to the throne and the recovery of the monarchy in these lands. Britain was forever changed on that day. In Northampton, however, it symbolised a much more room for the courage of those who sought reconciliation with the crown and who rebuilt this town from their charges. 
As we raise our glasses, we are more from memory of King Charles II than to our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth II. We also drink of the poet. We must meet the present times with the same endeavour to bring reconciliation where there is brokenness, healing for our wounds, and hope where there is despair. Almighty God, who hast in all ages showed forth thy power and mercy in the miraculous and gracious deliverances of thy church and in the protection of righteous and religious kings and states, professing thy holy and eternal truth from the malicious conspiracies and wicked practices of all their enemies. We yield unto thee our unfeigned thanks and praise as for thy many other great and public mercies, so especially for that signal and wonderful deliverance by thy wise and good providence as upon this day completed. And vouchsafe to our then most gracious sovereign King Charles II and all the royal family, and in them to this whole church and state and all orders and degrees of men, in both, from the unnatural rebellion, usurpation and tyranny of ungodly and cruel men, and from the sad confusions and ruin thereupon ensuing. For all these, O gracious and merciful Lord God, not our merit, but thy mercy, not our foresight, but thy providence, not our own arm, but thy right hand, and thine arm, did rescue and deliver us. And therefore, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name be ascribed all honour and glory and praise, with most humble and hearty thanks in all churches of the saints. Even so blessed be the Lord our God, who alone doeth wondrous things, and blessed be the name of his majesty for ever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and only Saviour. Amen. I require that the statue on the portico roof of this church of his late majesty, King Charles II, now be wreathed with oak leaves.
on this day of great thanksgiving, let us drink our health, the health of the majesty and the welfare of our ancient borough. God save the Queen. We've come to the end of our OCAP all day broadcast. I hope you can uh, now hear me with a little bit of luck. Um, and uh, and apologies for the sound dropping out a little earlier in the service. There's no clear reason why I did that. Usually we kind of know why, and it's something I've forgotten to do. Um, but there's no clear reason why that happened. So apologies for those inconvenience. But thank you to all those who have stuck with us through this broadcast. Um, before the blessing and the, uh, the final bit, there's going to be some credits that are going to roll with some thank yous to everyone who's helped out uh, with this. And uh, one person I missed out, and I really shouldn't have done, was Matthew Foster, who spent uh, hours preparing the choral videos, many of the choral videos that you've watched um, as part of this service, as part of our other services, um, which happen every day apart from Saturday. Um, and uh, he deserves our high praise and hearty thanks for everything that he has done. Uh, with our choral videos and in making those multi-track performances come together in such an astonishing fashion, not least with the national anthem, which we have just heard. All Saints returns to uh, live worship on Sunday morning at half past ten uh, in exactly the same place. You can pick it up on YouTube at youtube.com slash allsaintschurch and one slash live um, or at allsaintsnorthampton.co.uk where you can watch the embedded stream right on the front page of our parish website. I wish you the very happiest of couple days. You'll be able to pop outside and see the oak leaves around King Charles this afternoon. Um, and I pray that we may uh, know God's grace and mercy in the days to come. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.